Virginia Governor Ralph Northam is resisting calls to resign over a controversy involving racist yearbook photos and admissions of wearing blackface. In an interview with CBS This Morning co-host Gail King, Northam said he believes the controversy is a learning experience and maintained that he is the best person to help Virginia heal. We have worked very hard. Uh, we've had a good first year, and, and I'm a leader. Uh, I've been in some very difficult situations, life and death situations, taking care of sick children. And right now, you're a doctor, yeah. right now, Virginia needs someone that can heal. Uh, there's no better person to do that than a doctor. Virginia also needs someone who is strong, who has empathy, who has courage, and who has a moral compass. And that's why I'm not going anywhere. I have learned from this. I have a lot more to learn. But we're in a unique opportunity now. New polling from the Washington Post found that Virginia residents are split on whether Northam should resign, with 47 percent saying he should, and the same number saying he should not. It also found that a majority of African-American residents did not feel that the governor should step down. This all comes as Virginia's lieutenant governor, Justin Fairfax, is facing calls to resign after two women accused him of sexual assault. Fairfax has said he will not resign and called for the FBI to investigate. CBS News has also learned that four of Fairfax's staff members have quit following the allegations made against him. Let's bring in Eugene Scott, Joel Payne, and Caitlin Huey Burns. Eugene is a political reporter for The Washington Post. Joel is a Democratic strategist and former senior aide for Hillary for America. And Caitlin is a CBSN political reporter. Welcome to you both. Eugene, I'd like to start with you. Governor Northam said that he wants to focus the rest of his term on promoting racial equity. Is that something that he will be able to do? He can do that. Any politician can focus on racial equity if that is what they choose to do. The question is, is he the best person to do that? And according to many uh, lawmakers, specifically related to the Virginia Black Legislative Caucus, there's little confidence that uh, Northam is the best person to do that. However, it is worth noting that the majority of black uh, voters in Virginia do want him to remain in place. And I think there's a clear reason for that. One, they understand that if he steps down, so will Mark Herring, the attorney general who also confessed to uh, participating in blackface while in college. That means if Justin Fairfax gets to stay in office, he will become the governor. And Kirk Cox, who is the uh, speaker, House Speaker, would be lieutenant governor. And that would put someone from the Republican Party uh, in the top really top positions of uh, politics in the state of Virginia. And that's concerning to black voters who overwhelmingly vote against the Republic, Republican Party, and especially, specifically, Donald Trump. Uh, Joe, let me get your take. Um, first of all, what do you make of the way Governor Northam has navigated this? One word, Trump. He's taken his cues from our president. Um, this is exactly how President Trump would react if he found himself in a situation like this. And I think what we found is that a lot of politicians have decided I'm not going to follow the rules of convention. I'm not going to go and do the thing that everybody does, which is run away with my tail tucked between my legs, uh, like he may have done in the past. He's saying, I'm going to stay and fight, um, even with the entire Democratic establishment abandoning support from him. I mean, when I say everybody, I mean everybody. The Democratic Party, Bobby Scott, Tim Kaine, Mark Warner, you name it. If you're a Democrat of, of name value in Virginia, you've called on uh, Governor Northam to resign. So he really is on an island by himself. He is on an island by himself. However, we just cited that Washington Post poll, Joel, that shows, you know, a majority of African-American residents in the state don't want him to step down. So that would seem to be doing the will of that very constituency, yeah. right, which it could be argued he had offended initially with the way he handled so, the controversy. So really what this comes down to is how Democrats are now going to choose to lead going forward. Democrats have set a very high standard, right? Let's go back to the Brett Kavanaugh situation. Let's look at Al Franken. Democrats have said, if this is in your past, if any behavior, misbehavior like this is in your past, we are not going to allow that to be represented at the ranks of our party. And for good or for bad, I think this is where Democrats are. I think if Democrats do not want this to be the way that um, they are judged going forward, I think they're going to have to course correct because this has become the, the expectation that Democrats have set for themselves and their policy, and their office holders, rather, excuse me. So uh, Lieutenant Governor Justin Fairfax has said he will not resign and has called for investigations into two allegations of sexual assault brought against him. A number of national lawmakers have called on him to resign. Do you think, Caitlin, that he's starting to feel the pressure? 
He's not. In fact, he seems pretty dug in on his position at this point, which is denial, denial of both accounts, which many who are calling for him to resign have deemed credible. And to your point about the Democratic Party establishing this moral high ground or seeking to claim the moral high ground uh, when they ousted Al Franken ahead of that Alabama special election, uh, their stance on Kavanaugh, their stance on, on others, John Conyers, you know, was also part of this. Uh, they have a zero tolerance policy and they're kind of facing that head on here with political consequences. Those consequences being that if they were to oust all of these folks, the Republicans could come into power. So they're kind of at this moment. But you're seeing the 2020 candidates, the Democrats running for the party's nomination for president, all kind of in unison, calling on Fairfax to resign. They already called for Northam to resign. So this is really a uh, sticking point for the party. But they're also starting to feel kind of what these consequences actually are. Could this, Eugene, potentially be uh, the start of a recalibration of that zero tolerance policy that we'd seen on the Democratic side? You know, I don't know that it actually is, in part because most Democrats have called on these individuals to resign. So it appears that the majority of Democrats, um, at least in positions of power, don't want um, this policy, the zero tolerance policy, to change. Mm -hmm. I think what you're seeing on the ground when you're looking at voters are people being a bit more pragmatic and practical and seeming to understand that there's a big difference between doing something 30 years ago admitting it and making a vow to change, um, which is what uh, the Democratic Attorney General and the governor have done compared to perhaps some of the situations we've seen with Republicans like Steve King and Donald Trump. Um, and asking someone to leave office if they are suggesting a repeated behavior that is, is, is problematic. Um, I, I think certainly that we're going to see some Democrats um, in office, stay in office, stay in positions, despite facing some real controversies and arguing that that's the best thing for the party as a whole. Joel, Elaine, yeah, Elaine what's unique about this too is the Virginia rules around governorship, right? They're one-term governor, so there really isn't a re-election that Governor Northam has to contend with and have to worry about going in front of the no electorate again. This is his political yeah. destiny, essentially, here in his hands. He doesn't have to face voters again, and I think that makes this a really unique situation, whereas maybe in another state you'd be worried about, hey, in 2021 i got to go back in front of voters. Also, just thinking about the 2020 race, you know, I think Jamel Bowie on Face the Nation yesterday, I think he said something about how uh, this was the woke primary, mm -hmm. who was the most woke right. out of anybody. Right. Yeah. And I think that's bled over into how we, um, you know, how we govern ourselves in everyday behavior as well, particularly for Democrats. Democrats have decided to traffic in this. And I, and I don't say that critically. I'm just saying that's where we've decided the standard is. Mm -hmm. So if the standard's there, that they're not going to move off of that mm -hmm. because it's important to where they are, where their voters are, and where the future of the party is. I imagine there are really uh, some very heated discussions, though, taking place behind the scenes on the Absolutely. Democratic side. All right, Eugene Scott, Joel Payne, and Caitlin Huey-Burns, thanks to you all.